will soon. When do you think your podcast is going to officially get out there? August 6th. Oh, you've got a date. Like start. August 6th yep. you start, so you should be probably producing yep. episodes shortly after. Well, we have a lot of things already recorded. Oh. So we're, August 6th is when we're actually going to kind of do our first launch of some of the stuff mm-hmm. that's record it but we're also going to throw in some lives um so it's going to be a little bit of a mixture of a lot of fun stuff and there's going to be tier levels that oh. people can choose what fits in their budget love it all right yeah. well uh we'll get some more details probably the next time we talk to you but in the meantime if you got a question for kim get in line right now let's start with rachel morning rachel how are you hi i'm good how are you great thank you for asking thinking about moving to the east coast is that what's going on here Yeah, so my question is, well, I'm about five years post-grad. I've always lived in Minnesota, and uh, funny enough, all my friends have literally moved to the East Coast area, New York. I love going out there. Um, I try to find, um, you know, I've I've applied to jobs out there for one reason or another. Um, it, It never transpired. So I'm back in Minnesota. But I'm just wondering, kind of like, you know, five-year plan, do do you foresee a move? Yeah. I keep hearing Connecticut, <gasps> Connecticut, Connecticut, like big time in my head. Amazing. So they're like, that's where you need to Are look. Are you kidding? And, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> sorry. No, my best friends will literally live in Connecticut, <laughs> and I always stay with them when I go out there. No way. <laughs> I love that for you. And I love all the fresh seafood you're going to be eating. That's going to be incredible. Rachel, they're going to pick you out with your accent so fast. They're going to be like, oh, my God, that girl's been in Minnesota her whole life. So funny. No, I'm ready to lose the accent. I don't want it. Well, (laughs) it's going to take a while. But uh, Connecticut is the place you need to be. So uh, we hate to lose a listener, but you just download the app before you leave, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, Rachel. Have a great morning. That was crazy. Really, just Connecticut jumps out at you like she's going there. That's wild. Easy enough. Uh, hi, Jasmine. How are we feeling? Mm-hmm. I'm doing well. How are you? We're great. Thank you for asking. So you had uh, a question for Kim about um, housing, right? Like uh, your living situation. Correct. Go so um, last spring, last spring we had a house fire, and we've been in temporary housing for just about a year and a half, and things are maybe starting to wrap up at the house, but there have been problems every step of the way. So my um, my question is, do you see us moving back into that house or do you see us selling the house and moving on? Um, actually, you need to sage this house for one. Um, <laughs> I, I have to laugh because it's like, it just burnt down. Like, why would I bring in more like flames, fire to this place? But the, I hear laughing. So there's some energies going on in this house. The reason why you're it's not moving along, there's some spiritual energy. So you have somebody come out and sage or sage the place first. Move back in, then sell. Have you had feelings? Oh, way to make it easy on her. Have you had feelings like there's some activity or or something that one hundred percent? Oh my god! Do you think a ghost burnt your house down? We don't know. Um, It was it was undetermined by the fire marshal. Damn. Um, hey, Kim, oh, it, some very strange things in that house. Yeah. Real Kim, crazy. Kim, real quick, yeah. what does saging do and to I a house? It lots of times. Uh, saging helps bring everything back to an even keel. Uh, even like, so there's neither good nor bad. Sometimes sage does not get rid of spirits, so that's where you need somebody who actually knows what they're doing to to talk to the spirits, get the spirits to move on that are screwed around. But sage alone just helps bring the whole energy back to a baseline and even kill ground zero. And then you go in and then you put your love back into the home. So if you were in a home that has a lot of negativity and you go on sage, it just brings everything back to even. But if you have continuously negative energy in there, it's just going to stay stuck. Would so saging and reframe rate that? Would saging get my kid to pick up his room? Is that like something that would mm. work? No. <laughs> No, I see it's up over the head. Okay, all right. <laughs> right. All right, well, hey, good luck, Jasmine. The plan is clear. You got to sage it, rebuild, get some love yep. in there, sell it, make your money. Exercise the demons. Yep, sounds good. All right, thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> Have a great morning. You're welcome. Uh, time for one last call. Angie just made it in here, and I'm glad that we got to you because uh, mom just passed. How long ago? I'm sorry. 
Um, it, it was actually a number of years ago. It was about eight years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, um, nonetheless, never easy to lose been, a loved one. Yep, I've been trying to call to get in touch with Psychic Kim, too, just to, um, you know, check in on her and see see if she's with her parents and, you know, if she's okay with how she passed. I think everybody wants that reassurance. Kim, what are you seeing with uh, yeah. with Angie's mom? Um, uh, okay, this is... Hmm. I keep hearing there was, it wasn't an accident. So this was no accident. Um, it feels a little, I hate to say this, but a little malicious. So I don't know what that means to you, but mm. that's kind of what I'm getting initially here. I see a lot of pinks and yellows. So I don't know what that means, pinks and yellows. And I see flowers, different flowers all around me. Um, butterflies. Wow. Like there's pretty butterflies all over in front of me. Um, just like a whole bunch. Like I'm walking through this little field, flowers, butterflies everywhere, and I I hear a little bit of hesitancy to move forward, almost like she wanted to stay, wow, stay on Earth realm. Um, who's the little Who's the little boy over here that tends to cur- I see curling up tends to be more emotional. I don't know if it's your son or if it's a nephew. Like a nephew of yours, I see a little boy who's kind of balls up, balled up in a corner, crying, miss, 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 um, very emotional. Do you have a son yes, that's very um, emotional? Yes, I do have a son who was two when she passed. That um, okay? He's the or he's the only grandson or grandchild that she met, um, and so okay. he we moved in with her before she passed, and they were you know, always kind of together, too. No. Yeah, because I feel like she was with, stayed with him for quite a while before she actually transitioned over, just to let you know. Um, Okay. uh, There's some song, something with rose, rose, roses, but then I feel like there's a song that goes to it. I can't pick up the song, but I can hear something in the background, some music playing. Um, And then what's her thing with, like, polka music? Um, did her parents polka? What's with the polka type music? Um, you know, I don't the polka, but um, I don't know if this would work with like the rose. Her mother's name was Rose. Oh, um, okay. Because I was hearing oh, Rose, and then I got pulled to like polka, and it felt like I was going like further back in time frame, like seeing people doing polka in front of me, like okay. the older generation. So I don't know if her mom did polka or there's something about that. And I see some dancing twirling around in front of me. Um, Okay. Was her mom, was her mom kind of slimmer at some point? So your grandma? Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Because she shows me Um, twirling around and dancing and it looks like some form of dance. Maybe it's not necessarily polka. And then I hear, I I see like a rose and I see. They were very and I'm um, looking full of life, I guess, with like dancing and stuff, but not necessarily polka, but okay, um, very yeah. fun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, Kim, <laughs> Kim when, when people call, when people call and ask, you know, uh, yep. somebody passed, how are they doing? I think the ultimate assurance that at least I get from our listeners that they want you, to, they want to know number one that they're in heaven that they're okay, yeah. that there's no more pain. Is that something that you can kind of feel like for somebody like Angie's mom? So when I'm seeing it this way, she's just showing me that, okay, this is where she's been. This is where she's now at. She's with her <clears throat> with her parents, her mom. I keep hearing Rose. So that's a good feeling. I don't feel any stress. I feel more calm and I feel happy. So that's saying like she's where she needs to be. So she's just validating where she was at, just staying with her son, or with, it would be her grandson, um, until she was ready, until he was ready to let her go. He wasn't ready to let her go. Now she is. But then I hear something about there's, she's good, but there was something that was malicious when she passed. All I right. don't know what that means to you. Well, but, kind of hang with yeah. those thoughts for a while, Angie, and if you need to listen back, uh, we'll throw this in the podcast. And Do uh, some digging, too. Okay. You know, that maybe you'll find out that they did go polka on the weekends, and that might bring you some, yeah. uh, some you know, validity yeah. to the reading yeah. as well. It's probably so. reassuring, though, today, huh? Yeah. Yes. And, um, she, she passed from cancer, so um, and she had tried a, a lot of 
a number of treatments actually. And so there mm. was, you know, issues with fighting the insurance company to, oh, you know, prove okay. things, stuff like that. So it makes sense all of a sudden. All right. Well, hang in there, Angie, and, yeah. uh, and glad that we could help you out today. I hope you have a great morning.